Hi, Joe Glavin with City Floor Supply, and welcome to another edition of our helpful tips and hints on solving problems. Uh, we're standing on our um, demonstration panel. Uh, if you get a chance to look at it when you come here, this panel was built by uh, advanced students at the NWFA school. So uh, as you can see, everywhere around you is wood flooring, but today's event is going to be about vinyl. So specifically luxury vinyl planks. Um, we brought Tim DePaul with us today. Uh, Tim is the owner and founder of usvinylbending.com and he has a really unique set of solutions for essentially what is an issue when you're installing vinyl plank flooring. Um, Tim, tell us a little bit about your product and your company. So what I did is I, um, I invented a tool, it's a patented tool that enables us to take um, pretty much any vinyl plank flooring out of the box and bend it into an inch and a sixteenth uh, radius, which fits over most um, of your standard radius bull noses and steps. Um, by doing that, it gives you a seamless transition. Um, a lot of the things that are on the market that you all know if you've done any vinyl plank flooring the stuff that comes with the material kind of lips up over uh, the material which causes a tripping hazard on steps and these things come loose uh, we've installed a lot of this stuff and uh, it does come loose so you wind up going back to the job and fixing these things they're plastic they break they come loose so it spurred a you know a need for me um, and my company to come up with a solution and, and what I did is I came up with something that bends the vinyl right out of the box so it's a perfect color match and also fits over top of uh, most treads and, and bull noses, existing bull noses. Um, with all that being said, <clears throat> I'd like to show you briefly how this works on a set of steps. It's, it's fairly easy to do. You know, the concept isn't unlike what we would normally call a retro tread, you yeah. know, where you're, but in that case you're cutting off the bull nose to put in, you know, a, a 5 8 thick natural wood flooring tread, this is going to be encapsulating the existing bull nose. So with you guys, if you're familiar with doing any oak steps, um, like Joe said, you have to cut the existing nosing off, so you don't have to do any of that uh, with this, with this um, product. A lot of times what we'll do when we get on the job is make sure your steps are square, so you're obviously going to have to check for squareness on both sides. This one is about a degree out on that side. Um, you're going to want to measure up your steps. Obviously, you're going to measure your, your width and your height on your risers. Now, what we like to do is to do one at a time because these, can, these um, steps can vary. They can be a sixteenth or uh, an eighth inch or even a quarter inch out. The, the stringers are always out, um, bowed either way. So what I like to do is I measure individual uh, risers and treads and then we cut them to size and we number them. So obviously this is tread number one, tread number two, tread number three. And they, are, they do vary a little bit in size. Um, so what we'll do, once we get all of our measurements, we'll cut our treads. You will need a pull saw to do this, um, to cut through the tread. Um, You'll cut, and I'll show you how to do that, but you'll, you'll, you'll cut your uh, length and then obviously your front to back. And I'll show you how to measure that real quick. Basically, you're going to take your width uh, measurement or your length uh, and then your height on your riser. I do measure these individually because they can vary from step to step. We do number them. So after we cut them, we're, we're going to put you know, tread number one, tread number two, tread number three, riser number one, two, three. Um, because again they do vary in size. Um, you're going to measure your tread from your riser to the front of the radius and then when you cut these you're going to measure from the inside of your radius to the back. Obviously you're going to need a pull saw to cut your your length and a table saw to cut your um, width of the tread. These are already pre-cut. I didn't want to bore everyone with watching us cut these. so. Without any further ado, then what's the um, <clears throat> installation? So you want to do risers, treads, risers, treads, or you want to do we tread went riser? We went back and forth with that, and I had a meeting with a bunch of installers because um, you know this is a, a, a newer concept, mm -hmm. and 
uh, I got a lot of feedback from a lot of installers and we found the best way to do this is going to be tread, 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 and then drop your risers in afterwards. Yeah. We were doing riser, tread, riser, tread, but the problem was when you put the riser here, then your tread is not going all the way back to the radius. So we found out to drop all the treads in first and then drop your risers in afterwards works the best. You will need um, a good uh, pressure sensitive adhesive or some type of good adhesive. I know you guys carry a good one, I just found yeah, that Yeah, we'll go over that um, after Tim's done describing the installation. Uh, we're gonna talk about Vockel's uh, Motinator which is a high tack adhesive and then but we'll go over that as soon as Tim shows us the install here. So that's what you're going to use then on this. That sounds there like it'd be the, be the product to use. So after you get your measurement, your treads and risers pre-cut, you put your uh, pressure sensitive adhesive or your adhesive on here and then you're going to just install the treads. Now you're going to, this is tread number one, you're going to put your adhesive down, you're going to push it back. These do fit pretty tight on the, on the on the um, existing bull nose and then tread number two again these are all pre-cut I like to do a full spread adhesive on these what I do too and this was something else that came up at the meeting last week a lot of these guys are loading some glue up in the front here just for safety reasons and and, and they're really glue in the, the the front of the inside of the the radius um, which we thought was helpful too um, you know tread number two glue it up put your tread number three on and then again we do have these risers numbered now what we offer is a lot of the homeowners like to do these pre-primed risers now um, so we have a couple pre-primed risers or also you can use uh, the material itself so we did both just to show what it looks like so after you get your treads in glued in then you you can put your risers in it's it's pretty easy uh, pre-cut riser you put your risers in you cut them good you know if you have a little gap here and there you can caulk this stuff in and right. make it look good and then this is the one with the material itself um, you know, you're gonna put that in there and then that's it now we do there is a Scotia molding that you can stain up that is a nice look for this it goes up underneath of the bull nose um, you can dress that up with that if you want. You don't have to, right. but um, it does have a good look. And that's just the standard Scotia, standard Scotia or molding. Cove molding you could do. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you could even use shoe molding if right. you had to, but I think the Scotia is a little, yep. little nicer. It has a little reveal on it. Um, one of the other things that we ran into in doing this, um, sometimes you get in these situations with step downs in family rooms, basement steps that you don't have a bull nose. You just simply don't have one. So they, they sell this stuff. Um, you guys will probably be carrying it as, mm -hmm. as well, I'm sure. Um, but it's an inch and a sixteenth bull nose. It's, it, it comes in oak or pine. Uh, we prefer to use the pine because you're covering it up. Right. It's a little less expensive. But you can take this and you can install it um, on the front of a step or it, if it doesn't have an existing yeah. bull nose. A little bit of construction adhesive on the back, some trim screws, let it dry good. And then your, your bull nose or the vinyl tread that's bent, you know, it, it gives support for the front of that. Right. So it, it is a good, you know, thing to have on hand if, if you get into a situation where you don't, yeah. don't have a, a, a bull nose. Um, the other thing I want to mention is, uh, again, you know, we've fooled around with this a lot. One of the things that I did want to mention is that we make these treads um, out of the material right out of the box. Whenever you bend something, I don't care what it is, plastic, vinyl, metal, it, it gives somewhere, so it's, a, it's always going to give. Um, the ends of these uh, give a little bit here when we bend them, so, so we call it pooching it out, so, so it's, it's a little pooched on the end on each side. So we make these longer than what they have to be, usually an inch or two longer, so that it gives the installer an opportunity to trim that little pooched off edge um, off. I highly recommend don't just cut one side of this, cut both sides. Yeah. yeah. And and a lot of guys if you have a stair jig you're using for this or whatever however you're cutting your or you know cutting your treads in um, to cut both sides absolutely cuz some of these you know you might have a 1 degree angle on this yeah. side and 90 on this so it's it's best to trim even if you're doing oak steps it's best to do both sides. But if you cut this little pooch out, um, you know, cut both sides, it, it eliminates that problem. We always make these bigger. If you need a 36, we're making a 38, or you guys are getting all right. 48s from us. And what, what so are your uh, length specs? We make this um, up to 50 inches. Okay. 
So we, we, can, we can bend up to 50 inches uh, long. Most of this stuff only comes 48 inches. Correct. There are some products that come 72. Mm -hmm. I can only do 50 inches. Um, the machine only allows us to do up to yep. 50. Working on a bigger machine, but we're not there yet. Yep. <laughs> um, With time. Yes. So the other thing that w is a big concern is open steps. So we're getting a lot of questions about open steps mm -hmm. you know what, what do I do if we got open steps first of all you got to know that if you're doing open steps the, the handrails and spindles have to come out you're not working around that stuff so when you're in a homeowner's house and they want to do open steps the first thing is handrails and spindles right. and old posts have to come out and that goes with that's oak retro trail. treads that, that's oak yep. treads that you're going to retrofit Sa same thing but you know you'd be surprised how many homeowners you get in their house and and they're like I want to I want to well we're not doing our rails and I'm not a guy that's going to take your existing rail system apart and put it back together because they never go back together tight like they were the first time um, we are doing uh, we're mitering this stuff or the or the the installers can miter this so you can take a tread and rip it down to just the bullnose part and, and you can miter this and we're getting a pretty good miter out of it and the good thing is if you use it out of one tread <clears throat> you can line the grain up so it's it's the same piece now I don't think the homeowner is going to be able to do these kind of cuts and put returns right. and all that stuff on here this is going to be a skilled technician that's going to be able to do this um, and, and not everybody can do yeah, it yeah and I would say that on most crews the more talented guy is probably going to be the one doing the stair yep. install anyway. And, and even if you're o your oak steps, you're not mm -hmm. going to send you know the homeowner in to do an open set of right. steps. And <clears throat> so this is very capable of doing the open steps with the returns. It just takes a little bit more skilled guy to be able to do that. You can miter this stuff. You can you can cut the tread, the front of the tread off, and miter it. Again, like I said earlier, it's going to take a skilled technician to to learn how to return or not learn, but to to do the return on this. Um, we're going to have a couple other videos in the future and you're going to have a display I'm making you with a return step on it to show. One of the problems that you run into with this vinyl planking, like the hardwood floor guys, when they, if you cut a miter and it's a degree out or whatever, yeah, you can do a little sand and a little filling, a little touching up. You can't do that with this stuff. No. It's pretty straightforward. Now we've tried seam sealers, we've tried, <clears throat> I find that some of the markers or like the wax pens and stuff like that if you are a little out you're gonna have to touch that edge up it's a little more tricky to deal mm -hmm. with this stuff you have to be a little bit more precise with your with your cuts but yes you can do open steps um, we just did a couple sets through our business and um, it turned out really well so and w w you know we'll, we'll have some videos on that and Perfect. and stuff like that so <clears throat> earlier I mentioned you know about cutting the treads in you know, this is your typical stair jig. I think you guys carry these up here, right? Yes, you can find that at cityfloorsupply.com. It's yep. just under stair jig. It'll take yep. you right to it. So that, that's, you know, it shows the angles on each side. You can place this down. Like I said earlier, you're going to want to cut both sides of the tread, not just one. So right. you can cut that pooch out of the, that pooched out part out of there. Um, and I think that's about it um, as far as uh, installing the steps and, and I mean you can see how they look they, they turn out really really nice Beautiful. and it's it's pretty simple to do so you can imagine you know what the manufacturer is going to send you for a bullnose that's literally sitting on top of this flooring at that first step or even the second step you know I mean if it's just not the way a hardwood floor guy would install a product no. you know it's 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 just not right so you've got a loose edge out here it's this system safe durable um, and then it's cared for just like any other product sure. you know the vinyl product so um, great idea solves a problem I'm all in one of the one of the other things um, that I did want to mention you know you guys are out there selling this stuff um, we're putting two pieces together to make the tread. So some of this product comes with bevels in it. So you have to explain to your homeowner that, you know, the beveled, I don't think you, your yeah, guy's product is, is square edge, but there are some products out there that are beveled. You gotta explain to the homeowner, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna get two pieces. Right. And even when you're getting solid treads now, they're not one piece, they're mm -hmm. three, four pieces glued together. So you're still, and I get that from some homeowners, like right. how come there's glued pieces here? But that's, that's what happens now. And it is the floor that's being installed. But it's that floor is are these treads that are being bent. So whatever that floor is going to be is going to be on that stair. Well, Tim, thanks for coming. I'm going to introduce some of the product 
that you bent for us. Thanks for having me. And I uh, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate Product it. is awesome. Um, US Final Bending. Dot com. Yep, US Vinyl Floor Bending. US Vinyl Floor Bending. So once again, I want to thank Tim from US Vinyl Floor Bending. Uh, one for coming up with a solution to a problem, um, which is a floor uh, treads matching the floor that was just installed with um, luxury vinyl plank. Um, it's a great solution. Uh, we're looking forward to having all of our colors in stock. Um, so from City Floor Supply, uh, if you have any questions, you want to see these on the website, cityfloorsupply.com, 1-800-737-1786. Uh,